Hello, this is Dr. David A. Gatros, Department of Computer Science at Florida State University, and I'd like to welcome you to my undergraduate lecture series on selected topics in computer science. You can find these videos and others at my YouTube channel at the URL listed below, or you can simply go to YouTube and search using Gatros and FSU as keywords. Now on to the lecture. What I'd like to do right now is to go over switch statements in C++. Very, very handy way to make discrete decisions and uh, I think you'll find them very useful. They have some limitations which we'll go over. Uh, the first thing I'd like to do is cover the syntax and semantics of the switch statement. Um, I put it in the comments up here. You notice I like comments a lot in my code. Uh, you start off the word switch and then inside parentheses is an expression. The expression yields a type. It's usually a discrete type like a uh, character or an integer or a boolean. Um, and then based upon that what it's going to do is it's going to go down here and look for the word case and look at the expressions that follow it and see if there's anything that matches what comes out of this expression. And if it does, it will execute the statements to the right of the semicolon. And it will do that until it reaches uh, a break statement or the end of the switch statement. Well, these are the rules. Okay, The expression must return a discrete type value, no float. So this expression up here uh, must be of some type like integer or, or float or an enumeration type, something that, that returns a, uh, a discrete uh, expression. In other words, it must be exact. Floats don't work because uh, there's literally, uh, uh, theoretically, an indefinite number of things in between 1 and 2. It's very, very hard to get an exact value, so you don't like to use floats. Comparisons are for quality only. It's going to match the expression exactly. So right here you couldn't say is not equal to expression 2. You can't do that. It has to be for equality. So less than, greater than, less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, not equal, not applicable. Don't do it. There can be any number of case statements followed by a value and a colon and usually what you're going to do is put in all of the um, expressions of the values that you're expecting. Uh, the expression 1, expression 2, so on and so forth must be the same type as the expression that the return and it must be a constant or a literal. So this thing right here that goes right here cannot be a, uh, a variable at all or it can't return a, um, a value of a uh, function. After the colon, there can be any number of statements, uh, and it will execute all of them once it finds a match. When the expression is equal, all the statements will be executed up until it sees a break statement or until the end of the switch statement is encountered. Now, when a break statement is reached, what it does is it terminates the whole switch statement and goes down to the right of the uh, uh, left uh, bracket here and continues on after that. Uh, you can omit the break statement. Syntactically, that's okay. You usually don't. Once you find a match in expression, you execute that statement, and then the switch is done. Um, I've not run into a situation where I found it very handy to loop break off, but you can't do it. Uh, you can't have duplicates. So if once you use a value, you can't use it later on. And the default is uh, is optional. Uh, let me let me spell this out. It is option null. Okay. Um, you should have one, and it's the last thing in the scenario, and uh, uh, there is no break statement because there's nothing that comes after it. So this is what one looks like. What I'm going to do right here is I'm going to read in a value. It's an integer. I'm going to say enter in something between 1 and 5, and I'm going to read it in, and that switch statement based upon that value will go down and look for 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5. When it finds a match, it will execute that. If it doesn't find any of the match, well, it will say, oh, it's not in the range. Okay, let's execute that. Let's see what it looks like. Let's build it first. Build it. Everything looks okay. And we're going to run it. And let me pull this up here so we can see it. So, 1 and 5. Let me enter 1. It says 1 is the loneliest number. That's what 2. Let me do 2. We can see that right up here to. Uh, let me run it again and enter 2. 2 can be as bad as 1. There are size. Uh, uh, that's just showing you that you can do one and more than one statement in there. Uh, and let's 
build this again and run it and I'll show you what one looks like when it reaches the default we'll say 6 which is not in the range it says up oh, not in the range okay now let's go up and show you one other thing before we go on um, notice I've got one case statement per set of statements you can actually put more than one let's say that it's uh, it finds a uh, uh, case case one or six and this is either one this is kind of like an or statement then what you can do is say it'll if either one or six is uh, uh, selected they will print this statement let's go ahead and put in another C out but six is okay two and uh, okay and let's go ahead and make it change this so it's uh, reads okay we will build it and we will run it and let's go ahead and put in six and there it found it six more this is a lonely number but six is okay too all right a brief explanation of switch statements now let me show you one other thing before we leave this let me pull up another one that I did and this is a, a very handy way to use switch statements. They're used for menus quite a bit. I've got a function here called display menu. So let's go down and look at that. I always use a prototype. And here's my uh, simple function. It just all it does is a lot of C out statements. It just prints out a, a menu. Add a record, delete a record, insert a record, find a record, display menu, exit. Okay. The idea here is that if I enter one of these options, the switch statement will actually take care of making sure that all the functions that are needed to make that work are called. So let's go up here and what's nice about this is you'll see that I use that feature that allows me to put two case statements whether it's an upper or lower case A what it will do is it will actually uh, execute all the records necessary to add a record so to speak. I'm not going to do that I'm just going to print something out. But let's go ahead and run this. I, this is also put inside a while loop while the option is not equal to E and the option is not equal to lowercase e, it will continue to, to display this menu. Notice that I set the option to blank first to get it inside the while loop. Okay. So let's build this and let's run it. And there we have it. We will say A upper, uppercase add a record, A lowercase add a record, same thing find a record lowercase uh, we'll put in something that J is not there and displays up a valid option there's the default it didn't work and finally we're going to say E we're going to exit and we ran our uh, through the while loop all right those are that's a switch statement briefly uh, kind of a clean little explanation if you like this video press like on the uh, YouTube and uh, subscribe to my channel. Search for uh, Gatros and uh, FSU and uh, you'll find me. Have a good day.